ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಗ್ರಜಾತಗನರಘುನಾಥೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಿಶಾಕಾಂತಿಶ್ಚಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ರಾಧನಾಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶುಂಗವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ಕಾರಣ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮಿನೇ ಗೌರತಿಶೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದರ್ಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಟೂ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಓರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಟು ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಅದರ್ ಟೂ ತ್ರೀ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕವರ್ ದ ಥೀಮ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹೆ ಬಿನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಥರ್ಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯಮುನಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವೆರಿ ಸಮರೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಯಮುನಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸಮರಿ ಇನ್ ಗೀತಾರ್ಥ ಸಂಗ್ರಹ ದೇಹ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಆತ್ಮಾಪ್ತಿ ಹೇತು ಆತ್ಮವಿಶೋಧನ ಬಂದ ಹೇತು ವಿವೇಕಶ್ಚ ತ್ರಯೋದಶ ಉದೀರ್ಯತೆ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥರ್ಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ದ ಆತ್ಮಾ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಮಾನಿತ್ವಂ ಅದಂಬಿತ್ವಂ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಆತ್ಮ ವಿಶೋಧನ ಅನಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆತ್ಮ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಬೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂದ ಹೇತು ದೀಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡನ್ ಬಂದ ಹೇತು ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವಿವೇಕಶ್ಚ the manner in which the atma should be contemplated as being different from the body okay so if you remember as i told you in the 13th 14th and 15th chapter krishna is discussing as per yamunacharya and ramanujacharya the three tattvas that is about jiva about prakriti and about ishvara and in 16 17 18 he is discussing about karma yoga dhyana yoga jnana yoga bhakti yoga that means the upaya so there is tattva and there is upaya okay so so most of these topics were actually covered in the second chapter but as we said earlier uh, ramanujare says that it is like a uh, appendix you know so sometimes some important topics are left behind so any teacher has an appendix where he adds some things so that is what is being said so we have already done till text number i think 22 or something so let me just fast forward on that and then we will begin our today's discussion right one second yeah till here we had done in fact if you recall last time we did this point that many of these verses propad uses it to talk about the super soul but ramanujarya talks about it as atma only like upadrishta anumanta bharta bhoga maheshwara he talks about it from the perspective of atma that means how the atma is bound in this material world so that is the explanation that he gives right and, and you will see that for some more verses Uh, so let's go into the 23rd verse here ye evam veti purusham prakritim cha gunai sah sarvata vartamano pi nasa bhuyo vijayate okay so these are the last uh, 12 verses of this 13th chapter uh, where uh, right he is talking about viveka the discrimination needed to understand the difference between uh, the sharira and the atma 
he says here krishna is saying here the one who understands clearly in this matter about jivatman and his natural state dispositions and about prakriti along with the gunas like sattva etc with its inherent tendencies though he may be currently undergoing various difficulties such a person will not again become encased in a material body okay so I, i'll just uh, focus on two three points uh, as I, as you all know that i'm only focusing on the points where ramanacharya's commentary is kind of uh, Uh, different than what we have already studied or we know so uh, two points he makes here one is this word veti you know many times in scriptures we read this one who understands this obtains liberation so he begins by saying that just by understanding are you going to get liberation or go back to the spiritual world he says no the underst- the implicit understanding is that after understanding you will practice also mm-hmm. so in many places we read this right janma karma ch may devyam evam yo veti tattvatah one who knows such a person krishna says uh, right he will come back to me etc so in many other places also the scriptures we see such verses where it says veti veti means to know so one who knows about the jivatma can will not become encased in the material body so he says one who knows means one who practices some yoga system not simply by but, but it is understood if you know if you know about the jivatma then you will practice a yoga system okay so that is one point he emphasizes in this verse another thing he emphasizes is this word sarvata vartamanupi it's a very interesting word uh, proper translates actually this as in all ways being situated uh, ramanacharya gives a, a elaborate explanation to this term he says do he may be currently undergoing various difficulties now please try to understand this sarvata vartamanopi means vartamana means literally it means in the present sarvata means in all kind of situations in the present that means so what does he want to say that means he wants to say that a practitioner even if he is undergoing some very troublesome distressful situation materially okay material is undergoing some very difficult situation maybe financially maybe health wise from family perspective some major difficulty but if he continues to practice he will not become encased in a material body so this verse basically goes to say that no material situation can impede one's progress towards adhyatma you know that is the focus in this verse sarvata vartamanopi uh, focus on this particular word here though he may be engaged in any kind of difficulty such a person will not come back to this material world so like that krishna says right uh, we'll go ahead dhyayen atmani pashyanti kechid atmanam atmana anya sankena yogena karma yogena chapare the ones who have mastered the yoga of meditation behold the pristine jivatma in their body using their purified mind through the yoga of meditation others who have not attained necessary proficiency in yoga prepare their mind to be fit for yoga of meditation by performing jnana yoga and yet others who are not qualified enough to perform jnana yoga or persons who hold venerable position to guide the society choose karma yoga okay now this is a verse that will need some description if you see the verse itself krishna is saying three things he is saying dhyanena pashyati sankena karma yogena correct three things krishna is pointing in this verse uh, that means dhyana is literally means by meditation uh, sankhya is jnana yoga and uh, karma yoga to krishna directly mentions in the text only now look at how ramanacharya has put the translation i mean if you see the translation you can see uh, a kind of a commentary only in it so uh, right from the beginning of gita you know we have seen this uh, karma yoga please note when we say karma yoga gives perfection what is the perfection that karma yoga gives if you go back to the bhagavad gita in the initial chapters also krishna explains karma yoga third chapter fourth chapter fifth chapter third and fifth karma yoga basically brings one to some a position called as samatva okay uh, we have said this before when we discussed fifth chapter karma because the end of the fifth chapter is all about samatva and the beginning of the sixth chapter is also about samatva samatva means equanimity 
equanimity in situations in life equanimity in seeing people equanimity in happiness distress whatever so that equanimity is what krishna expects the karma yogi to come to that is the perfection of karma yoga now that equanimity itself is not going to give you any liberation but what that equanimity does is it makes you eligible to do meditation that is why immediately after fifth chapter krishna has spoken sixth chapter where he talks about dhyana yoga so that dhyana yoga that yo, that dhyana yoga is not something to be done uh, it, it it is actually to be done by the karma yogi okay so it is not uh, like sometimes we have an imagination that dhyana yoga means somebody has to go to the forest and do that no uh, that somebody may do in a state of perfection of dhyana but the practice of dhyana yoga is done by a karma yogi sitting at home right because he has achieved samatvam he has that eligibility to now do dhyan because see, uh, see now you may ask what is the connection the connection is that karma yoga basically once it has purified a person of the lower modes rajoguna tamoguna and has given a person equanimity now he can actually sit and meditate without being distracted see this is krishna's logic in the initial chapters of the bhagavad gita karma yoga drives away the lower modes gives you eligibility to meditate uh, by giving samatvam because if you don't have samatvam or if somebody is having too many lower modes he actually cannot meditate that means even if he sits to do meditation he is heavily distracted due to his lower modes or due to the fact that he has so many enemies and his mind is totally disturbed so if you look at that logic of presentation hmm, the karma yoga brings you to dhyana okay there is another path which is the jnana yoga what is jnana yoga meaning jnana yoga means only th- two three things one is control the senses analyze the material elements and meditate on atma so in jnana yoga there is no action mind you it is only contemplation uh, by contemplation one understands the atma is separate from the body and then one starts meditating this path of jnana yoga is there in the upanishads etc but in the bhagavad gita krishna doesn't recommend that so much correct because consistently krishna has told arjuna do karma yoga and then come to dhyana okay and when we say come to dhyana it doesn't mean stop doing karma yoga karma yoga also continues but now every day some two hours you can do dhyana like that and such a person at the end of when he has mastered dhyana yoga he can pashyati atmana pashyati atmana means what he can behold the atma that means literally he can see himself okay this is the kaivalya moksha right path okay so the such a person can see himself um now if uh, now so 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 basically there are these two parts from karma yoga one comes to dhyana yoga or from jnana yoga also one can come to dhyana from jnana also one can come to dhyana but krishna has not so much recommended that in the initial part of the gita or neither here uh, because why because krishna repeatedly says that oh hey arjuna you stick to karma yoga only in fact it's very amazing i'm just taking you back in time if you in the third chapter you know that famous verse 3.35 Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha Para Dharma Sanushtitan. That verse is there, right? Ramanuja Chari gives a completely different meaning for it. If you remember, generally we talk about Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha by saying that we talk about it from Varna perspective, correct? That means we say Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha means uh, it is better to do the, one's duty as a Kshatriya rather to do one's, rather to do a Brahmana's duty for Arjuna. That is what we generally think. but sripad ramanujari's commentary is that is not what krishna is saying because his point is it is understood that arjuna will not do the duty of a brahmana what is there to even tell him that because uh, how can uh, somebody change his varna like that you cannot so ramanujari's point is shreyan sadarma vigunaha krishna is saying in the third chapter to remind arjuna that you are fit for doing karma yoga not jnana yoga that means their swadharma is referring to the yoga that you are qualified for that is how shripad ramanujari presents the yoga that you are qualified for his point is hey arjuna you are qualified for karma yoga shreyan swadharma you are qualified for that 
para dharma sunishtu that someone else may be qualified for jnana yoga like the four kumaras or somebody like that you don't do that so other may nidanam shreya better you do karma yoga even if there are some imperfections don't try jnana yoga which you are not competent for see this is krishna's presentation in the third chapter this is how ramanujare puts it see it's very interesting that same var shreya and sudarmo you can see it generally we all understand it we have all understood it uh, from varna perspective but ramanujare talks of it from yoga perspective okay that better you do karma yoga and don't do jnana yoga and in fact in the entire third chapter krishna also goes on to say even if you are uh, uh, evolved and you can do jnana yoga still you do karma yoga only that is why in this translation also see what he says say look at the last thing he says four persons who hold venerable position to guide society choose karma yoga okay this kind of translation he has specifically given in the context of the third chapter discussion of maharaj janak because krishna had said they are right maharaj janak was the competent to do jnana yoga but even he did not do krishna in fact says even i am competent i don't have anything to do in this world i am not attached to any result or anything but still even i do karma yoga krishna says so 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 this whole verse is to be seen in connection with the first six chapters of the bhagavad gita correct so krishna's point is either you are not qualified for jnana yoga like that shreyan sodar mohers or you are having a very high position in society like janaka so better to set an example to karma yoga because because if you try jnana yoga many people will think that path is better of not doing action correct because not doing action is always very very uh, you know pleasing to the senses doing action is a very troublesome thing right giving up the duty is very easy so 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 that is how this whole thing is there right but still you need to remember karma yoga doesn't give you moksha or liberation it only brings you to samatva because we should know that also we cannot simply say that are by karma yoga only one went back to god right? no it is not possible by karma yoga you will come to samatva you will come to that equanimity your lower moods can be destroyed in fact that is why ramanujacharya i'm going back to the third chapter ramanujacharya in the third chapter he raises this question why is krishna talking about lust and anger in the third chapter correct in the last part of the third chapter the discussion about kama and krodha why because kama and krodha are coming from rajoguna tamoguna and if you don't do karma yoga you are going to fall prey to that that is why i do karma yoga so 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 that whole third chapter ramanujare presents it karma yoga only and that karma yoga is so in fourth chapter about it krishna do he spoke briefly about jnana but then he mainly spoke about an integrated approach of karma in jnana correct he said that in karma have jnana okay in karma have jnana that means that means in action have inaction and in inaction have action that means in your do your action with knowledge correct that is how krishna presented four chapter that means krishna presented krishna presented four chapter as bring jnana in your karma yoga and finally in fifth chapter he again spoke about it in greater detail about how it has to be done etc and then he went into the fruit of it which is nothing but uh samatva and in the sixth chapter that samatva becomes the eligibility for jnana and that jnana yoga basically helps you understand atma okay so this is how it is so this is the four of bhagavad gita and among the dhyani is the topmost person yogina api sarvesham he understands that are what is the use of simply meditating on atma let me meditate on paramatma now and that is why seventh chapter bhagavad gita starts where krishna is talking about bhakti yoga okay so this whole flow should be pit pat in our minds right we can never afford to forget that correct and in fact in the fourth chapter if you recall we had discussed this very elaborately also there are different different types of karma yoga that krishna had mentioned in fourth and fifth chapter like in fourth chapter worshiping the devatas uh, studying the vedic literature all that was part of karma yoga and in the fifth chapter there is entire thing of uh, uh, consciously understanding that my body is doing everything but i am not the doer correct that part came into picture so all this was karma yoga only correct and the maturity of that uh, came to dhyana and now krishna is saying that hey this is how it is by dhyana you can 
achieve this particular position. Okay, let's go ahead. Now look at so 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 now Krishna in this verse he spoke about three things, right? Jnana, um, Sankhya, or Karma. And then look at the next verse. This is verse number twenty-five. Anye tveva majanantaha shrutva nyebhya upasate tepi chati taranteva mrityum shruti parayanaha. Yet others who have not not having the knowledge of the Jivatma and thus not being qualified even for karma yoga also, get to know about the knowledge of the Jivatma by listening to the great preceptors and they start performing karma yoga. Those people who have taken to hearing the preceptors' discourses as the principal means, even they also get cleansed of their sins due to listening process, begin to start performing karma and cross over the mundane material life. Uh, these translations are actually very similar to what Prabhupada translates in Bhagavad Gita as it is. Uh, this and the previous verse. So here what Ramanujare points out is, see, three steps were set in the previous verse. Do dhyana to understand Atma. If you are not yet reached the level where you can do dhyana, either one has to do jnana or karma yoga to come to that level. But if somebody says, I'm not even able to do karma yoga, some person can say, right, even this karma yoga is too much, right? what are you saying? Uh, do your action without attachment to the result, do it as an offering to Supreme, do it understanding that you are not the doer. All these things are very complicated. I can't do this. Okay. Then Krishna is saying, Shrutva, just hear from great people. Okay. So that means that this is one step lower than Karma Yoga. What is the step? That means simply hear. Okay. By hearing, you will understand. And then you can come up. In fact, in that purport, Prabhupada says that most of the modern society is like this only. They are not qualified to practice anything. They have to first hear. Okay, that is why the process of hearing is also very, very important. Hearing Shastra. Right? One should never be lazy to hear Shastra. So, so this is the fourth step. And there is another fifth step also. Shruti Parayana. Shruti Parayana means some people say we can only hear. Parayana means final stage. Parayana means final stage actually. That means they say that we can't do anything. We can't practice also anything. Krishna is saying no problem. You only hear. By hearing all your sins will start cleansing. Automatically you will be able to practice the yoga system and ultimately you will also cross over the path of birth and death like that. Okay, so, so this purport and uh, translation is very similar of uh, Prabhupada and Ramanacharya. So I'm not saying any more on it. Uh, I'm just going ahead to verse 26. Right. Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit Satvam Stavara Jankamam Chetrak Chetraknya Samyoga Tadvitti Bharatarshava. Translation Hey Arjuna, understand that whichever entity, whether they are mobile or immobile, however much they have, how, how much ever have come into existence, they originate only by the amalgamation of Kshetra and Kshetragnya and never in their separatedness. Okay, see, so now what happens, this Dehatma, you know, see this Deha and Atma, right? How did this Dehatma Brahma come about? Brahma means this misunderstanding. So he says Samsarga, the word here is Samyoga. Samyoga means they have literally amalgamated, as in they have they have become one, literally. That means the Chetra and Chetraknya, correct, have amalgamated and uh, hence, uh, uh, you know, all these in living entities exist. So in Sanskrit, there is this term called as Bhuta. Like you say, na, Bhuta, Bhuta, Devarshi, Bhuta, Atpandranam, Pitranam. We use the word Bhuta for living entities. This word Bhuta in Sanskrit refers to the combination of Atma and Sharira. It doesn't refer only to the Sharira and it doesn't refer only to the Atma. Like even the word Deha, if you remember, I have spoken earlier also in the context of 13th chapter, Ramanujara says Deha means the body in which Atma is there. That is called as Deha. Okay, the Atma is not that you cannot call it Deha anymore. So, this Kshetra and Kshetra in, in a way have amalgamated some yoga. They have come together. And that is why all these living and non-living entities are existing. Correct. So, so this is always being uh, spoken. So, anyway, so we are going ahead and uh, some more differences are going to be said. Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tishtantam Parameshwaram 
विनश्यत्व अविनश्यत्व ये पश्यति सब पश्यति ओके हियर रामानुजारे ट्रांसलेशन इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम प्रभुपाद प्रभुपाद हियर टॉक्स अबाउट परमेश्वरम एंड सुपर सोल रामानुजारे टॉक्स अबाउट इट एज जीवात्मा ओनली बिकॉज रामानुजारे पॉइंट इज All these verses in the thirteenth chapter are talking only about Jivatma, so he doesn't go to the Paramatma. He says Paramatma will begin in the fifteenth chapter. Okay, so look at the translation. The one who has clear knowledge and perceives the Jivatma who resides in different bodies, he Jivatma being the supreme ruler of the respective body, Indriyas and mind, are of the same essential nature and equal to each other, being of the form of knowledge and bliss. And even when He perishes. The jivatma remains imperishable and does not undergo any change in his essential nature. Such a person alone sees the pure jivatma. Okay, so from here onwards, that viveka that we were talking, right, is being said. What is the viveka? The viveka is that the jivatma may reside in different different bodies, but it is the same. Okay, and Ramana Jare's point is the though the word parameshwara has been used. The word Parameshwara has been used in the context of Tishtantam Parameshwara. Tishtantam means the Lord of this body. So the Lord of this body means he says the Lord of this body cannot be the super soul. The Lord of this body is the Atma only, who is the who is literally like a Parameshwara sitting in the body. See, as I told you many times, the thing is the difficulty or the the beauty you may say of the language is. The word Atma can refer to the mind, body, intelligence, soul, super soul. Similarly, the word Paramatma can sometimes refer to the super soul. Sometimes the Atma also it can refer in various contexts. So that is how these various commentators get various meanings out of it. Okay, so so Ramana Jare says that water in a gold pot and water in a mud pot are both same. Okay, so it doesn't change the water. Okay, so the body may be different, but the Parameshwara is sitting inside the controller of this body, the soul who is trying to you know do many things inside. He is of the same nature, Samam. See the word Samam also, which is there. Ramanujare uses this word Samam to say that this is Samam is being used because Atma is being spoken. Because if it is Paramatma, you don't have to say Samam because everybody Paramatma is the same Paramatma only that everyone knows. But here he says because in every body there is an atma and all these atmas are actually same in terms of their nature. That is why samam is being used. And then he says there is something called vyatikare logic. Vyatikare logic means he says generally you know this is a logic. It says if you put a log of wood, if somebody takes a log of wood and puts it in a huge body of salt water, then what happens is. That entire wood becomes. I mean, and if you keep it for years, let us say you have a big log of wood and you put it in a water body which is salty for many years, then what happens is that that whole log of wood itself becomes like a big uh, log of salt, literally, because salt permeates the entire log of wood because it was there in that ocean body or salt water body for a long time. Okay, so somebody may ask, doesn't that happen to the Atma sitting in this body for a long time? Doesn't he become like uh, you know? Uh, doesn't the Atma also get affected by the material prakriti? He says no, it doesn't happen like that. He still remains aloof from it, and Krishna will give proof for that in the subsequent verses. He says it doesn't become. Another logic Ramana Chari uses here is he says. That a small body can go into a big body. The big doesn't go into the small. That means he says, for example, like there is a fruit. You want to cut the fruit. You have a knife. The knife, if you see the edge of the knife, which goes into the fruit, is very small. Okay, so that the knife is able to pierce the fruit easily. Correct. So he says the small always the smaller thing goes into the bigger thing. Okay, it easily goes into it. So he says the atma is the smallest, uh, so nothing can go inside the atma. Okay, so that is like the final uh, unit of being small. Okay, and no one can go into it. So like that he says. Okay, and uh, yeah. So these are the only two three points in this particular chapter. Yeah. Now look at the next one. Here again, see Krishna is going to talk about samatva. Look at this verse. Samam pasyan hi sarvatra samavastita mishwaram. 
नहीं आत्मा आत्मा नम तथो याति पराम गति the one who perceives the jivatma who control support and are masters of their respective bodies are present everywhere residing in their respective bodies as the same essential nature of the form of knowledge completely equal to each other such a person uh using his purified mind does not harm himself by drowning in the ocean of samsara rather as a result of perceiving the jivatma in all bodies as equals attains the pure state of jivatma liberated from samsara so here again see krishna is bringing to samatvam because this is the fruit of understanding the difference between atma and sharira and i think we have to really practice it you know sometimes uh, when you when we look at different different people we go to the office sometimes we meet some very big person we meet a very ordinary person then we meet when we go out in the world we meet different different people right i think it sometimes helps to be contemplative at that time to think about this reality that you know some person is sitting like a owner of this organization some person is a pure or a class 4 you know he is like a you know he has some different position generally from a material perspective we see a lot of difference in these people but sometimes it's also useful to be a little contemplative and think how actually you know they are all the same there is a samatvam here so krishna is speaking about that and that is uh, to be a part of our meditation where uh, one has to consciously see that samatvam in all beings okay so with mind he doesn't trouble himself so 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 the point is here see here uh, there is a there is something uh, very uh, beautiful in this particular verse see there are the word atma itself right in one uh, one context atmana means mind atmanam means the atma okay that means see how krishna is saying here with the mind with the atmanam one doesn't harm himself that means see, see if you look at the verse na hinasyanti atmanam 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 right so this word atma comes two times in this verse and once it is used to refer to the mind and once it is used to refer to the atma itself the, the the point is that one has to use the mind to ensure that one is not degraded you know like that so the word atma only two times it comes but both the times it has a different meaning okay prabhupada also uses the same translation from prabhupada's translation of the see the first atmana is the mind and the second atma is atma like that okay so so this is how you say now yeah the next one prakriti eva cha karmani kriyamanani sarvasha yap pasyati tatatmanam akartaram sa pasyati the one who perceives that all actions like stretching out folding etc are actually done by prakriti alone which is transformed into the body and also observes that the jivatma and the pure essential nature is not the doer such a person sees the reality of jivatma's pure state again if you recall this verse is a repetition at least the first part from third chapter prakrite kriyamanani gune karmani sarvasha it's a slight uh, repetition of that uh, mentioned in a slightly different context where krishna is emphasizing that everything in this world all karma is actually done by prakriti only and the jivatma is only the seer so this is also you know to be done kind of meditatively or you know one, sometimes we can actually practice this uh, what we can actually do is uh, look at ourselves as a third person that means you know consciously try to see that are my body is doing this that but i am only a witness see this is a theory, this is something that we learn in the gita but in our daily routine also we could sometimes try to con- be very conscious of it that my body is currently feeling sleepy my body wants to eat my body has to do this that right body is engaged in so many things but i am actually not doing anything i am only witnessing i am only seeing the body doing all this because that's actually what is happening but the point is we we just forget it right we we think that uh, i the person is only doing this so so that that see this is this is part of this dhyana also in dhyana this is considered an initial part where you actively try to understand that you are not the doer you are only a witness 
okay because krishna is reminding us again and again you are a witness okay so so try to just think about it that you know i am a witness and perhaps even while when we do our japa also in a way the same kind of understanding helps right so my body is seated in one place and i am chanting the name of the lord of course the, the body is reciting it the mouth is reciting etc but i have to keep hearing it so so this consciousness is important to be cultivated and uh, you know that is what krishna is repeatedly saying here that all acts are done by body only okay uh, and uh, samadarshi and that is why a person becomes samadarshi so namanujare says you become samadarshi by this understanding that not only me but everybody around me only their bodies are working according to prakriti and their atma is only a witness sitting inside and when you start seeing like that you understand oh there is samatva all of us are same as in we are of the same nature everybody is a witness sitting inside and all of our bodies are made to dance by prakriti in various ways so he says this is how one begins to be samatva uh, by seeing this right and, and this helps one comes to sattva guna this helps one to understand that uh, Uh, and even sometimes you know solve some uh, trivial issues also like we may have a fight with someone over some very egoistic thing at home or with somewhere else in office work etc but then if you just step back a little bit and understand and if we are contemplative we can understand actually our bodies are only behaving in specific ways uh driven by various situations but each of us is a witness and each of us is actually equal to each other so this has to consciously come in our life and that is what is the conclusion of this particular verse which will help you understand which will help you give that viveka see this whole section of bhagavad gita is teaching us that viveka understanding body is separate from atma so how do you get that viveka by doing all this consciously okay by doing all this a bit consciously otherwise we are just lost in the daily grind of life there we forget to do this right let's go to the next words yada bhuta prithak bhavam ekastam anupashyati tat eva cha vistaram brahma sampadyate tada when a person clearly perceives that in the kshetra kshetra ke amalgamation it is only the body the kshetra which is subject to transformation like youth old age etc thin fat deva human animal and that it is from the body only that the expansion of progeny happens then such a person attains the pure state of jivatma see this is considered like a phala of this that means if someone can even understand this again someone can clearly perceive that in this amalgamation see what is this amalgamation try to understand amalgamation means just like if you see a lion the nature of a lion it is for whom it is for the body or it is for the atma if you ask the question then the answer is it is for the combination that means when there is a atma in that body of a lion then only it will behave like a lion right because the atma is gone then it is a dead lion's body it is not behaving like a lion like a lion roars uh, like a lion uh, like every cat if you see they have very specific ways of doing things right the way they lick themselves the way they take care of their children it's very unique in every species so he gives the example of a lion here saying that when you see a lion uh then what is the lion he says the lion is the combination of the atma in that body of prakriti okay that body is the lion's body and in that body when the atma is there then only the nature of a lion is seen okay but though it is there like though it is a combination this whole concept that uh, i have to behave like a lion this atma is getting only due to that body if that body was not there the atma would not get that thought only that to be like a lion that same atma can be in the body of a rabbit also and then he will think that i am a rabbit only he will behave like a rabbit so though it is an amalgamation the body makes the atma think and act according to that particular species and in fact ramanujacharya says i mean going back to the bhagavad gita 13th chapter if you remember there was one verse na anadi you know last time also i spoke about it anadi karma phale that 
the number of lives we have had in the past is unending. And if you remember, I did speak about it, right? That as per Ramanacharya, we have been here. Uh, Nitya Baddha means we are here since unlimited births. That means we are literally been here only always. There is nothing like we came from there. So he says, because we are here, Anadi, we have taken all types of 8.4 lakh species in our Brahmana. So he says, whenever the soul enters a new body, it immediately has memory how to behave in this body because it has behaved in every body in the past. So he basically says that all of us have been lion at some point, tiger at some point, pig at some point, everything we have done. So anybody we enter, we exactly know what to do. We don't need any training. You see that, right? Any any species is born in a particular, any soul takes birth in a particular species, immediately he knows how to behave. It's something amazing, actually, if you think about it, right? If you see all this natural, uh, this uh, uh, national geography channel and all that, you see this. Every species behaves exactly in a very, very, and very, very specific and complex ways. Like recently I was reading about, you know, the African dog. It's, it's a very uh, exotic species. This African painted dog, they say, uh, the way it has a community, you know, the way it avoids inbreeding to maintain the quality of species. You know, there is something called inbreeding, huh? like if a brother and sister only mate, then that is called inbreeding. So they avoid it. I mean, the way they do it, that, that, that knowledge, everything is there with the Atma in that body of a dog, right? When it is born in that family of that uh, African painted dog, as they call it, wild dog, or any species like that. Okay. So Ramanacharya says, this is because we have taken all species in the past. So here he says that one has to understand this. The Samatvam, by practice of Karma Yoga, brings us to the point where we consciously See, uh, it is it is not only karma yoga, but also that conscious practice as a sadhana, where one uses some time also. You know, this this need not be. You need not separately sit and do. Many times we are with ourselves, right? We are traveling somewhere. We are sitting in a bus, or we are sitting in an office meeting, waiting for the meeting to begin. Sometimes five minutes we are just sitting. Even such moments we can use to contemplate these truths of Gita, that how this body is the doer. All these bodies are running around, acted upon by Prakriti. But the Atma in each of these people who are sitting in this meeting is the same nature. This kind of meditation, they say that one should, uh, one should try to do specifically. Uh, it will bring you to this level of Samatvam to understand that, okay, you know, everyone is equal. And, and, and then what happens is that one is not enamored by some very big person or disgusted by so-called very small person. Because everybody is equal, just that Prakriti has given them a different body. Okay? And when you start meditating on that, that is said to be that Samatva, you know, which is Krishna speaking here again and again, then you can actually start appreciating the pure state of Atma, like that is says. Right? Next to us. Uh, Anaditva Nirgunatva Paramatmyam Paramatma Yavmavyaya Okay. The translation. Hey Arjuna, see again now here the word Paramatma is used. So here the translation is different between Ramanucharya and Prabhupada. Um, okay, no, Prabhupada here also Paramatma he says Atma only. Okay, fine. So it's the same translation. Okay. So the translation is Hey Arjuna, this Jivatma who is much superior to the body and Indriyas and thus called Paramatma. Okay, see, see, the point is here, the word Paramatma is being used, but Prabhupada and Ramacharya both translate it as Jivatma only. Okay, because the context is Jivatma. So that is Ramacharya's point. Though he dwells in this body, because he is without a beginning, having never been born, he is imperishable and immutable in his essential nature. Unlike the body which is perishable and keep it, keeps on changing its nature. And since he is devoid of Sattva, Rajo, Tamo, Guna, which are the Gunas in the body, which is transformed from Prakriti, he does not engage in any action, even though he has been association with body since time immemorial, he does not acquire the qualities of the body and remains immutable in his nature. Okay, so this particular verse, uh, the Jivatma is called as Paramatma because he is superior to the body and Indriyas. So that is the explanation. Because he is 
is superior to the body and the indriyas is called as paramatma <coughs> okay and and two three characteristics are said one is anaditva that means he is always there second is nirgunatva so this nirgunatva is going to be the elaboration in the next chapter three modes of material nature and that's a very beautiful explanation which is going to come very soon and the third is na lipyate this na lipyate again this is used many times in gita to say that even though the atma has been associated to the body since time immemorial he does not acquire the qualities of the body and remains immutable in his nature so here is where ramanujare says we cannot apply that logic of that log of wood in salt water because uh, the log of wood in salt water becomes completely salty in nature but because na lipyate krishna says this atma though he has been with different different bodies at different times he is still separate from it he is not touched by the body okay so yeah so here again the translation is simple so we we'll go ahead yeah next one yata sarvagatam saukshmyad akasham no palipyate sarvatra vastito dehe tatatma no One second. Yeah. I just lost track of my. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Server. Uh, sorry. I'll read the whole verse again. Yata sarvagatam saukshmiyam akasham no palipyate sarvartha vastito dehe tatatma no palipyate. Just as the ether, which is spread out everywhere and in contact with all substances, which inma. which immensely uh, differing qualities nature is not tainted by the qualities of any such substances due to be extremely subtle in nature in the same manner the jivatma is the most subtlest being present in all different bodies of deva human animals immobile etc does not get contaminated with the natural disposition of the body okay so here krishna is giving an example of the previous point previous day see the last verse ended with na lipyate right that na lipyate is being elaborated in this verse so what is the elaboration the example is like ether like akasha goes everywhere see generally uh, anything that touches the body right becomes contaminated like we say uh, like we wear a set of clothes that cloth is considered contaminated right if you remove it also you have to wash it you cannot i mean like you going to take bath and later next day wear the same set of clothes because it was touching the body it is considered contaminated so one may think that are even the atma is with the body only will it not be contaminated so he says no that example you cannot give here so the example is there that anything in contact with the body uh, if it is touching the body it becomes contaminated we may give that example but uh, with the atma it is not like that because it is like akasha akasha means ether ether touches everything but still it is not contaminated okay so so there is uh, air blowing in different different directions so but still the air never gets contaminated it's considered it, it is always considered like that so similarly the atma is considered more subtler than that eta sarva eta akasham sarvagatam na upalipyate okay so the uh, the ether is not contaminated similarly the atma is also not contaminated it's in fact even more subtle so krishna is giving an example right and uh, finally last two verses yata yata prakashe yatyekah kritsnam lokam imam rabihi kshetram kshetri tata kritsnam prakashe yati bharata in fact this is a favorite thing that uh, devotees be quote right we quote the example of sun hey arjuna just like how a single sun stationed at one place lights up all the worlds with its radiance In the same manner, the jivatma who resides at one place in the heart of the body illuminates the entire body through the light of his consciousness, which pervades the whole body. So this is the same, absolute same translation and commentary as Prabhupada. And we'll go ahead to the next one. Uh, so, so this is a famous example. We we always talk about this, right? How about the sun? Uh, the focus in this verse is that the atma has no avyaya. Avyaya means it has no parts. It is single. Eka revihi. The word Ramana Chari says important is eka. That means there is one. Okay, there is just one sun which is lighting up all the world. Similarly, this atma is one in our body. It doesn't have any parts. It's not that there are different parts of the atma with different different parts of our body. 
with this one atma which is illuminating the entire body yeah in the final verse kshetra kshetra gnayor evam antaram jnana chakshusha bhuta prakriti moksham cha ye viduryanti te param uh, thus those who very clearly understand uh, in this manner explained is the adhyay with the eye of knowledge imparted by lord krishna the differences between the body and the jivatma and cultivate spiritual qualities like amanitvam which are the means to attain sakshatkar such person attain the exalted pure state of jivatma fully liberated from samsara okay so bhuta prakriti moksha means living entity stuck in the body bhuta prakriti you know this word is important here it means living entity stuck in the body they need moksha from prakriti but how are they going to get moksha from prakriti by cultivating those qualities okay those 20 qualities amanitvam onwards which are mentioned so he says one has to consciously cultivate these qualities and uh, practice the process of karma yoga and only then one is going to understand the atma okay so this whole chapter is about this only as i said in the beginning the five topics discussed by yamuna acharya right what were the five topics the five topics very beautifully were uh, that uh, because uh, one was that what is deha that means this whole we just maybe just go back to that verse and end with that then i'll just take some questions and end with it this was a little technical chapter the 13th chapter the 14th is about the modes we'll do that in two sessions uh, 15th is about paramatma we will do that also in two sessions 16th and 17th again we will do two two sessions each 18th we will take five or six sessions for that yeah so we're just going back to yamuna acharya summary verse deha swarupam atmapti hetu atma vishodanam bandha hetu vivekascha prayodasha udiryate the nature of the deha that was the first part 13.123 atmapti hetu how to attain the jivatma all those 20 qualities atma vishodanam uh, that was from uh, 13.13 to 18 those five six verses the nature of the atma bandha hetu why you are caught up in this body this is what we discussed last time there was a five six verses from 13.18 to 13.23 and today vivekascha the manner in which one contemplates atma as different from the body right yeah thank you very much hari krishna any question or comment hari krishna yeah yeah go ahead hari bol uh proji this again i mean uh, you know thank you it's uh, you know wonderful explanation uh, just that i am unable to understand how one thinks that uh, one is body also and one is atma as well at the same time together and then one say that uh, actually the material modes are working and we are not working so when somebody does uh, something bad let us say somebody smokes a cigarette or somebody murders somebody someone so then this example cannot be given how this is applicable in all situations because when krishna speaks it should be applicable everywhere so what do you yeah, yeah. so so that comes ahead clearly in the deva sura vibhaga yoga uh, see the thing is uh yes it is correct that prakriti only is doing see even when someone is smoking a cigarette or drinking wine it is the prakriti that is doing it the atma is not doing anything but the point is have you reached that understanding see if you have not reached that understanding you cannot do that and if you have reached that understanding you will not do that you know that's why that story is there right about shankaracharya that uh, he said uh, in one context that there is I, i don't know the from the perspective whether the story is true or what but it it conveys the point nevertheless that he was walking with some people and uh, he saw a bottle of liquor and he said that this is brahman i am brahman brahman goes into brahman i am doing nothing so some people thought are this is a fantastic philosophy man we can also drink liquor and say this but then he goes ahead and has there is a iron being melted so yeah. he takes that liquid iron and says this iron is brahman 
my body is brahman brahman is going into brahman i am not doing anything and he drinks that molten iron also and the people uh, along with him got afraid of what he is doing so what that basically shows is have you reached that understanding see it is correct see that's why i'll tell you also if you see in our scripture right sometimes we see this that um, uh you know a great person is allowed to do some tasks which ordinarily is not allowed like i'll give an example like we say na in previous ages a rishi was called to impregnate a queen right like vyasa is called to impregnate ambika ambalika and all that correct niyog niyog this yeah yeah parashara he unites with satyavati and vyasa is born so so this type of union was there now if you look at it who was eligible to do this someone who was at this level who understood that i am not doing prakriti is doing and at this time in the universe the prakriti needs to do this that means even though i am a rishi in this context of prakriti this child has to be born so i only have to impregnate this woman so that rishi does that task and he is not implicated also why he is not implicated because he has that understanding now an ordinary man cannot say that uh, same thing when he is uh, going to some woman and doing it like that because he doesn't have that understanding i mean the proof of that is if he really has that understanding that the body is only the doer i am not the doer if he is like that gnani he will not do it only na why will he do and say that so only in situations where the universal law and order demanded you to go against certain ethics people would do it correct that's why we see in shastra that uh, all type of acts that's why you know uh, even the so called forbidden acts if you see in the scripture you will see many examples of it uh, like i mean if you even go back to meat eating right we have discussed this like you see agastya in that story right he goes and uh, during shraddha they are eating uh, the meat of uh, some animal and uh, they are not being bound okay so so the point is if somebody had that eligibility the shastra allowed him to transgress certain rules but if you don't have that eligibility and if you do it then you are not in that consciousness then you are bound only right then you cannot say i am not yes. are you understanding the point yes point is clear proji but i mean i am looking it from uh, you know perspective of material nature or from krishna's perspective let us say Yeah. not from our perspective our perspective it is clear okay accepted but when krishna's perspective is what is your consciousness when you are doing something if you have reached that level where you have understood you are not the doer and prakriti is only doing you are not implicated by anything you can do anything you want hmm nothing really implicates you now such a person will not do anything but even if he does also he doesn't get implicated okay so uh, yeah. so even adharma also even if prakriti is doing it because that person does not have the consciousness of uh, being you know aligned with prakriti he will be implicated yeah it is not adharma adharma means see see now if you go back to the example that i took parashara uniting with satyavati no adharma you know in the sense that for example Yeah, yeah, not in the sense, but like you know, a dharma in you know, literally a dharma only <laughs> in that sense. No, no. See, there is nothing like literal a dharma and dharma. That's what I'm telling you. It all depends on who is doing and when and why. See, okay. Is, there is no absolute uh, definitions of these. If if you if you really go into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you say Parashara's union with Satyavati was dharma or a dharma? What will you say? No, no, for sure dharma uh, because. <laughs> but. but But the point, so so on what basis are you saying? You are saying this on basis of his level of consciousness. Yeah. Ordinary man today is going in a boat on an ocean, and <laughs> as an affair no. to the woman, can he? Yeah. No, no. He cannot because he is not at that level only in the first place. Hmm. So so that's why I am saying this. There is no absolute level definition like that. Also, See, it depends. it depends on who you are and what is your level of understanding so there is no the definition of dharma and adharma i mean four regulative principles are certainly there that just say hari krishna prabhu ji prabhu ji on this question only there's a point 
yet uh, the, the in the modern world right today's world i would say right then people say that uh, why create such privileged class right that uh, the why create such a privileged class right and and at one point of time such such thing was kind of exploited by samartha brahmans a lot right uh, and against which even chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, was also doing kind of a revolution right bringing the harinam to to all the classes of men and women so uh, sometimes uh, some people who had elevated positions in the society they used to go beyond and recently i have not seen it but it has been the talk of the office talk of the society there is a certain movie which has come in where some culture of gujarat was shown where some high level priest used to uh, involve himself with women or do some some kind of nonsense and calling it like an exception similar to this right that okay you know we are at the elevated place we are very close to god so we can take such an exception right so this this thing actually is getting a lot misused and and that's where if even the modern society then calls out that uh, see you are creating classes of men some people have privilege to do everything some and and you put norms on all the normal society so uh, i i'm not uh, disagreeing with uh, the point in any way given it is by shastra but we get a lot of critical uh, uh, critical uh, feedback from the modern world due to this actually it uh... what you're saying is right but the privilege is not based on some position by birth or anything it is based on eligibility of a person see every rishi is not a parashara or a vyasa or a agastya to do something so ji it's a such a such a hard work to explain this very point which you just mentioned even <laughs> to the indian society that by birth nobody is a brahmin or a kshatriya right it is like instilled within the society and that's where the whole world uh, sees us that you know we have provided such classes in the society right even not they are not able to understand it that we can think so broadly even the uh, indian uh, uh, society is not able to acknowledge that point that by karma and by one's inclination one belongs to a class and one associates right i am from a brahmin family i am from a kshatriya family right actually you know what we should also present the scriptures in a very magnanimous way if you see our scriptures also na in in many ways they were very very modern right i mean you you look at the mahabharata you look at the marriage of shakuntala and dushyanta it's an extremely modern marriage you can say agree agree yes prabhu i mean yes, dushyanta so. goes to the place where kanvamuni is there but she is not there at home he meets dushyanta he proposes i mean they marry as in it is just verbal acceptance there is no marriage ceremony kanya da nothing they spend the night together it's pregnant yes next day morning dushyanta says when the sun is gone come over to my kingdom right yes. the father yes. of the girl kanva comes back and the girl tells that like this the king came and uh, we married and uh, you know we spent the night together and the father congratulates her yeah we will be more I mean, I, you may see something like this in a border western thing but that's yes. in wrong sense as in mm. see that's why you know, there is a difference here So yes these people had that eligibility to say we will do this yes and they were qualified to do that it is not just about a privilege extended they stood by it not that yes. till the later married some other girl or this woman shakuntala aborted the baby and you know decided are have nothing to give it man we just spent the night together just like that for fun No, but the story is very modern. I'm saying, you look at Satya yes. and Savitri story in the Mahabharat. That Savitri, mm. she is of marriageable age, and her father gives her a small army and tells yes. her go across entire Bharat and find a suitable husband and come back. So yes. she's having an army for her protection, 
but she is allowed to go to different different places meet different people and understand who is the most suitable man for me and she comes back and says satyavan is the man i have identified and narad muni comes and says that he is going to die in one year and all that anyway yes yes point is that's again a very modern thing right for a father to tell the girl go around the world find a suitable man come back and tell and arrange the marriage yes bro so, no i i i fully fully am i am aligned with you i think i i i personally recently yeah. i had a very hard experience i was meeting from some french people right and they were very critical of the indian society and to explain it to them the idea that every person by the virtue of their inclination and actions and their training belongs to a certain class and and actually i related it to their own society like one of my colleagues is his name is uh, matthew linder so linder is somebody who works on on wood so i said these things are there in your society also the way you see surnames here right trivedi chaturvedi yeah. so you also are a linder right you have worked on wood your ancestors worked on wood that's how they associated so it was a big exercise but i see some people take it like you know in a very different direction that's why i called that point thank you for yeah, your yeah. but we should we should so simultaneously we have to tell our scriptures are broad minded not only for some caste huh? it's not that only brahman kshatriya had privilege remember even the shudra was an independent person having a lot of privileges in life yes yes the privileges that we are talking were there even for him it was not that he was uh, he i think in some ways the narrative also has to be presented properly correct that that, that narrative it is not a casteist narrative where only some fellow has a lot of privilege and other doesn't have any privilege like yes that. everybody had their privileges and they they had it was that the, the modernness in society was there even in those times so yes. i think we need to present that maximum aspect of our shastra also that's what i'm saying okay. yes sir thank you right Okay, yeah, Rajendra Kumar, we have any question? Last question. We'll end with that. Yeah. Hari Bolbo. So, actually, I have two questions. One is a follow-up question. Uh, in this, in Mahabharata, there is a story of a butcher. You mentioned that he was dharmic and all that. So, I didn't understand how a butcher is dharmic. And second one is the verse in this 13th chapter, which says that uh, one can progress by hearing. so how do we compare this hearing process with uh, shravanam kirtanam vishnu said by prahlad maharaj okay good so the first one that dharma vyaja story na he is considered dharmic because he says in the mahabharat two things first thing he says i myself don't eat meat second thing he says i don't kill any animal i go to the forest and there are animals that are already dead i clean their bodies and remove their meat and sell them he tells that okay so he was a vyada born in the family of butcher so he was doing the business of selling meat but he was not selling meat by killing the animal more was he himself eating meat he says that in the mahabharata there are verses like that uh, and he was a very evolved soul in fact uh, the bhagavatam says that he went back to godhead immediately after this life so you know he is counted as someone who gets liberation immediately goes back to the spiritual world krishna tells us that uh, and the second thing is about the shravanam thing that shravanam in bhakti is about the shravanam uh, related directly to krishna that means hearing the past times of krishna that is a part of navavida bhakti like parikshit maharaj hearing from shukadev goswami this shravanam is uh, it is also shravanam only obviously it's hearing but it is hearing about more fundamental principles of life like gita okay so krishna is saying if you cannot do karma yoga at least hear about karma yoga are you getting it that itself is purifying krishna thing because somebody may say i can't do karma yoga it is too much to expect uh, to do things and be detached and all that i can't do that krishna is saying no problem you can't do it right simply hear about yoga that hearing is also very purifying it's not that everything i hear i should be able to do immediately i may have my own problems i may not be able to come up to some level immediately no problem let me just keep hearing okay by repeated because this message is the message of krishna right that you must do karma yoga you must develop samatvam i may not develop samatvam right now 
I mean, I may be even struggling with the basic things of Karma Yoga. No problem. Krishna is saying, just hear about this process. Okay, this is more about the process of the yoga system. Uh, that Shravanam of the Bhagavatam is more directly about Krishna. That you may say it is Shravanam only about Bhakti specifically. Which is like a Anga of Bhakti. Okay. But this Shravanam is also Shravanam only. It is about the Shravanam of the yoga system which again purifies you from sinful reactions. Uh, but the difference is uh, uh, this is going to bring you to the next level slowly. Whereas the Shravanam about Bhakti, Krishna is directly Bhakti. You know, that's the Anga of Bhakti. Like that. I hope that answers. Yeah, thank you, Guru. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna